Hello. Welcome to Pre-Technical Mathematics. This video lecture is on applications of vectors. Chapter 8, Section 3. We're going to go through a couple of story problems or word problems that will involve vectors. We're going to be doing the same thing by adding those vectors to come out with the resultant vector. Let's see what we've got here first. A ship heads due northwest at 1.5 kilometers per hour. Okay, northwest. That would be that direction. And that's 1.5 kilometers per hour. Okay. In a river that flows east at 7. All right, let's get our river. And that's 7 kilometers per hour. What is the magnitude and direction of the ship's velocity relative to the Earth's surface? Now, when it says relative to the Earth's surface, what that means is relative to the x-axis, okay? There's nothing involved with gravity or anything like that. It's simply the x-axis, all right? So oh, we're looking, we're going to have a uh, resultant somewhere in here. It's not going northwest, but it's being pushed east. So uh, let's see what we've got. Um, there's a kind of a simple way of doing this. This is your y component and this is your x component. We know that this is 45 degrees, right? Because it said northwest. So it's going exactly 45 degrees directly northwest. All right. Now, we can superimpose our triangle here that we're used to working with. And what we have is our y value right here, which is here. So the y value is the sine. It's the opposite side. It's the sine of 45 degrees times the 1.5. Now this component, these are components of our 1.5 vector. This component can actually be transposed down here on the triangle and that is the adjacent side. The adjacent side we associate with cosine. So we've got cosine of 45 degrees times the 1.5. <coughs> okay, now when we take this one, all we have is the x value of 7. So let's take our x values, similar to what we did, before with the x components and what we've got is this value cosine 45 times 1.5 that's it um I'm sorry. Ugh. This should be 15. Otherwise, it's not going to come out right. So let's change this to 15. Okay. And let's just get that out of there. 15. Now that 15, the x value is actually negative, isn't it? Negative. So we end up with negative 10.61. You 
must be careful about your negatives. All right. Now, what else do we have? We have a positive. Going to the right is positive. Going to the left is negative. Going up is positive. Going down is negative. Okay, we also have the 7 in the x direction. So when we add those together, we end up with a negative 3.61 in the x direction. And what was our y components? We only had one, this one, the sine of 45 times the 15, remember that's 15 again, and that should equal 10.61. But this time it's in the up direction, so it's positive. And that is our only value. So let's just take a minute and see what we have. We have a y value of 10.61 and we have an x value of negative 3.61. So our resultant is going to be in the second quadrant. So let's see, um, got to have room let's see, to find the ship's velocity. We can use the Pythagorean theorem. The negatives are not going to matter. Don't put the negative in into your calculator because they drop out. Plus 10.61 squared. And we should have the resultant velocity as 11.21 kilometers per hour. So this is 11.21. Okay, so now we've got to find the angle. The angle relative to the Earth's surface. Remember I said that this horizontal line, the x-axis, is the Earth's surface. So we're going to want this angle. All right, um, we'll put it down here. Theta equals tan to the minus 1. And we have our y value, 10.61 over negative, don't forget that negative, x value. And that's going to give us uh, 108.79 degrees. Now I led you kind of astray relative to the Earth's That's this angle in here relative to the Earth's surface. Wouldn't really be wrong to give us this angle, but your problems want it from the zero, zero point. Okay. Why? Nothing worse than ships heading in the wrong direction. see what else we've got. Ah, for those electrical people, we've got a parallel RC circuit. The current, I sub C, through the capacitance leads the current through the resistance, I sub R, by 90 degrees. Alright, so let's indicate that. We have I sub C and I 
sub r. 90 degrees. I sub C is 2.4 amps. I sub R is 1.6 amps. Find the magnitude of the total current in the circuit and the phase angle. Now when you're working with electricity, electricity works in waves, sine waves and cosine waves, and they refer to this as the phase angle. So don't be confused with that term. It is simply what we want is the resultant and the phase angle, theta. Okay, so R would equal our Pythagorean theorem again. 2.4 squared plus 1.6 squared it gives us a value of 2.88 amps and our theta would be the inverse tan of the y value 2.4 over the x value 1.6. I didn't get that point. There we go. And that should give us 56.31 degrees. Okay. So a little bit confusing here, which is why I wanted to show you an example of this, because it's talking about one leads the other. Okay. But what you want to key in on here is the 90 degrees. Oh no, not another ship. Yes, a ship. All right, a ship is sailing at a speed of 12 kilometers per hour in the direction of 10 degrees. Now, we're going to put an axis in here. And when the Navy talks, they talk all from this zero, zero point, this horizontal. So what we have is a ship at 10 degrees at 12 kilometers per hour. Okay. A strong wind is exerting enough pressure on the ship's superstructure to move it in the direction of 270 degrees at 2 kilometers per hour. Okay, 270 degrees ends up right here. It should be on the same line. And that should be 2 kilometers per hour. Okay, so at the same time that it's moving at this degree, it's also being pushed down from the wind. Oh no, now we've got a tidal current. Tidal current is flowing in the direction of 140 degrees at the rate of 6 kilometers per hour. Okay, where is 140? This is 180. So our 140 is going to be up here. Um, let's put this in. That's 270. And let's put this in as 140. So you can see where things are coming from. And this current is at 6 kilometers per hour. Boy, we've got a lot of movement in this ship. All right. <sighs> hmm. I don't know if I have enough room here. Let's try it. We're going to set this up how we set up our other problems. And we're going to put 
put the X component and the Y component. First thing we're going to take is the ship. Okay, this was our ship. Here's our components. The resultant is always between the X and the Y. This Y, this is the adjacent side. So that's cosine. So we'll put that in here. 12 cosine 10. And we'll go ahead and solve that. 11.818. How about our y component? That's the sine, 12, sine 10. Okay, so we've got 12, sine 10. And what does that equal? 2.084. All right, then we've got our wind vector. That was over here, right? No, no, no. That wind vector was down here. This was our wind vector of two kilometers. So it's got no x value. All it has is a y value. So we'll put 2 sine of 270 degrees and that should give us a negative 2.00. Oh. All right, we have one more, our current. That's this one. Let's see, let's put out our components. Okay. We have this value. y value as the sine, so it would be 6 sine of 140 degrees, and our x value being cosine, cosine 140 degrees. But we're making a pretty good mess here, aren't we? Okay, so this x value is 6 cosine 140 degrees equals negative 4.596. So if that makes sense, our x component is negative, it's going to the left. Our y component, 6 sine 140, should be positive. It's going up, and that would be 3.86. Now, let me see if I can squish in here. Our Rx is 7.22. Don't forget you've got a positive and a negative. Our Ry equals... 3.941. Okay, so you've got two positives and a negative. Okay, from there, uh, let's um, let's let me get some of this out of the way. That didn't work too well. Okay, that should work. So we've got our velocity.
velocity using the Pythagorean theorem. That's what we were trying to find was the ship's velocity. We have 7.22 squared plus 3.941 squared and that should give us 8.23 kilometers per hour and the direction it's going to go is the tan minus 1 y which was 3.941 over 7.22 and that should give us theta equal to 28.62 degrees. So our ship, instead of actually moving the 12 kilometers, it's really only moving 8.23 kilometers because of the wind and the current. And it's moving at 28 degrees instead of the 10 degrees, again, because of the wind and the current. Okay, no more ships. I'm done with ships. All right, this is the end of this lecture.